On April 2nd, Narendra Modi government launched the Arogya Setu app that gauges whether people are at risk of contracting coronavirus. According to a statement made by the Ministry of Electronics and IT, the app tracks the users' interaction with others in a bid to inform them as well as the authorities when they come in contact with a coronavirus positive patient or when they are deemed at high risk. As the app uses Bluetooth or the GPS proximity of a user's phone, the makers of this app recommend that the user switch on the location and Bluetooth settings at all times. Let's break down how this app works. As of now, April 14th, Tuesday, roughly 42 million people across India have downloaded an app made by the Indian government and volunteer tech developers called Rogya Setu. This app is going to help users determine whether or not they come into contact with any high risk or COVID-19 positive patients. It will also help the government determine if there are any hot spots that need to be treated differently across the country. It all started last Tuesday when there was a meeting between the Prime Minister, other high-level ministers and the tech developers when uh, they were presented with a presentation about how this app would work. Since then, there's been a huge push amongst the highest levels of government. You have uh, the PM tweeting it and discussing it in his speeches. You have high-level ministers tweeting about it. The HRD ministry, the railways ministry have been sending out advisories to get students, employees, um, and teachers to be on the app. You even have banks that have been sending their account holders to download the app. Partly one of the reasons that there's been such a push is that this app is mostly effective if and only if enough of people across the country download it, a so-called critical mass. way the app works is that if a user downloads it, the first step is a registration process in which a self-assessment asks the users questions such as age, profession, if you're a healthcare worker or a delivery worker, any pre-existing conditions you might have such as hypertension, lung disease, any international travel history you might have, as well as any potential contact you might have made with a COVID-19 positive case. When that self-assessment is completed, the app then presents a risk score. For example, your infection risk might be low, which means you might just have to stay indoors during the lockdown period. Uh, if you ever come in contact with someone who is high risk or COVID-19 positive, then the app will send you an alert. Now, how the app works, how it collects data and where it stores data, is that when you are registering, it sends your location and any other information that you've included to a server. The server as of now is an Amazon Web Services provider. It later will be transferred to the government owned National Informatics Center. Now after registration, the only other time the data is sent from your phone to the server is when you A, are determined to be high risk or B, if you end up being tested positive for COVID-19. All other times, this app is only collecting and storing the data on your phone. This data includes your location data every 30 minutes, as well as your Bluetooth data. For example, if I'm carrying this phone around and another user also has downloaded this app, the Bluetooth data is recognizes that these two apps have come in contact to each other. That log history stays on your phone, as I said, until either one of these people determines to be higher risk or COVID-19 positive. The at-risk decision being made after you take the self-assessment as of now is algorithmically based, but it, it the tech developers are hoping that they will add a human level to this decision making. They're also attempting to add new features, including an integration with the e-pass system, which would mean that if um, you have a clearance to have an e-pass, it might double check with this app to see if you are high risk and if you shouldn't be allowed that clearance. The developers and the government officials have told me that if the algorithm has decided that anybody is higher risk now the next steps would be determined by the appropriate health authorities so whether or not that requires being tested whether or not that requires having a quarantine check all of those decisions are being made by medical authorities not by the tech developers 
if a positive case downloads the app after they've been determined positive, where would their location history come from? And I've received somewhat mixed answers, but overall it seems like there is an application programming interface, which is an API, a highway between two different databases or programs, uh, which is linking this app and the server to um, the Indian Council of Medical Research. Now that would help them uh, integrate databases about the previous location history of the positive cases who download the app after they've been determined positive. So they are hoping that they can release a uh, feature phone version of it as well as an IVRS version so that people who are, do not have smartphones can also download this app as well. The app which has been downloaded by almost 5 crore people since it went live has raised privacy concerns among security experts. On April 14th, the government of India updated the privacy policy of the Arogya Setu application. Before we delve into specifics, it's important to highlight one particular clause in, it, in the app's terms of service. In particular, clause 6 states that the government will not be liable for any claims in relation to the use of the app. So therefore, any privacy issues would also necessarily not lead to any liabilities for the government of India. Even though it does set up a grievance officers that users may reach out to, no liability means there is not enough accountability for the government as it sets up these data gathering systems like the Arokya Setu app. The app uses both Bluetooth and GPS. Now the use of GPS means the mapping of movement. And the mapping of movements, even when it comes to contact tracing apps, is inconsistent with civil liberties and governments in countries uh, in regions like Europe are already agreeing that contact tracing cannot be uh, consi consistent with people's fundamental rights to privacy if it maps people's movements. The application collects information onto an external server if you are through its risk assessment uh, method, uh, modalities, either yellow or orange. Uh, that in itself indicates that people have limited to no control over their personal data, unlike other models where users are being given the agency to upload their data or share the data with an application should they, under the limited circumstance, test positive for the coronavirus, which is again determined by a medical test. There is no discussion by the app, uh, by the privacy policy of how the app intends to anonymize people's data, what are thresholds of aggregation, and how do they, uh, does it ensure that uh, these data sets are not vulnerable to re-identification by malicious actors. The Arogya Setu app does not mention which authorities within government of India can access the servers even as it is maintained by the National Informatics Centre. In most countries, access is restricted to just health ministries and even there, uh, access is limited by principles of access control norms. Uh, in India, no such disclosure is made and it's entirely conceivable that different government authorities can access these data sets. 